Well, good morning to those gathered here, those few of you, and for those following along at home, and especially for Harry and Rita. On this day that we want to remember and celebrate the life of Elsie Bloch. Uh, all, obviously, these days are always mixed with many emotions. Uh, of course, sadness, chief among them, the grief, but also we want to have it be a day of uh, memories, a day of celebration, a day of gladness as we reflect on a wonderful life and as we do so here in the setting of uh, the church home that Elsie called home for so many, many years. Uh, we do so as well, a few of us representing the church as, as those brothers and sisters in the Lord, so grateful for her life. And so again, I, I pray that uh, for you, the family, that today would be uh, both part of the grieving process on the one hand, but also that we can come alongside you and rejoice about your mom today. So let's open with a word of prayer, and then at that time I'll ask Frida and Margaret to come up and they'll sing a few songs with us. Our Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Our holy God, we know that our lives are in many ways, as the scripture says, like a, a mist. Sometimes it goes so quick here today, gone tomorrow, and Lord, we, we know that this is inevitable, that all life, all life comes to an end. But we thank you, Lord, that uh, some lives we look at and we see that these were lives well spent. We see that these were lives of faithfulness and joy, uh, good lives. And for these memories and for these examples, these saints, such as Elsie, that we look at, we, we thank you, our Heavenly Father, and how you shaped and molded Elsie as your own child, your own daughter, and how you led her and, and blessed her in so many ways. And today I, I pray for her family, I pray for Valdemar and Rita and Harry, that uh, you would continue to come alongside them and that you would use this day as a blessing in their life. So this entire morning, O oh Lord, we give over to you and ask for your peace to descend upon us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are difficult times. I want to thank everyone who came here today to make it happen. Pastor Don and the members of Mission Baptist Church, my friend Dave, who came to be a pallbearer. Mom,
mom called him a second son. Our friend Karen, who is at home sitting with dad, who could not come today, and the staff of Circle of Life, who have been so kind. You are all taking a risk. Rita and I are deeply grateful. Uh, I want to apologize if I appear a bit scruffy. This is my COVID cut. A few weeks ago, uh, mom cut my hair within our butter bubble. So I will be changing it soon. My task today is to tell stories about my mom, but there is a problem. She disliked being drawn into the limelight. So I hope she forgives me for doing just that. The story begins in Poland in 1929, like many other members of Mission Baptist Church, her early years were scarred by war. Her family had to flee from their home and ended up in the village of Eichhorst near Braunschweig in West Germany. She was 16 at war's end. There in time, she met a young man, a hardworking man. Eventually they married in February on a day so warm she didn't need a coat. They decided to emigrate to Canada. They arrived in Winnipeg with my sister Rita, only a few months old in her arms. This was a strange land and they had no command of the English language. After a few seasons, they moved to, to Hamilton where I was born. With no relatives nearby, they made German Mission Baptist Church, as it was then called, their family. She sang in the choir for many years and helped in the kitchen for countless special occasions. She was happy to serve. <laughs> if you were touring our house today, you would notice the chickens. There are chicken statues, chicken art, uh, even chicken cushions everywhere. Uh, mom's maiden name was Han, which translates as rooster. It was inevitable that rooster themed stuff would regularly show up as birthday gifts. Now roosters have a flair for the dramatic. Mom came to Canada with no understanding of English. So we were all surprised when she determined to read a certain book in English. That book was uh, Gone with the Wind. She must have seen the film and it fascinated her. Gone with the Wind is not a thin book and I did not expect her to finish, but she chugged her way through it and then she kept on reading. Her favorite activity was to settle back in her favorite chair and read. She especially liked biographies, books about real people in interesting places and times. But she often just picked up anything that was lying nearby. Often I came into the room and she was going through one of my books and <laughs> that's a laugh. Roosters like to explore. Rita was working as a librarian and wanted to travel, but not alone. So my sister and mom became travel buddies. They made many trips together to the Caribbean islands, to Mexico, South America, and the Southern United States. She actually got to see many places mentioned in Gone with the Wind. Roosters like to eat. Mom developed a taste for exotic foods especially the fruit of the South. Mangoes and papayas are a treat to eat in Canada. 
but the taste cannot compare to fruit picked ripe and eaten under a palm tree. Mom loved green growing things. So many thanks for all the flowers that have been sent. She would have been delighted. Last summer, I helped mom with the garden. She carefully separated the seedlings and planted them. I did the watering. All through the summer, we had little chats about how well the uh, beans were doing and sadly, how poorly the, the, the tomatoes were. Growing season is almost here and I promised to plant green things. Mom had a great depth of compassion and empathy. People liked to talk to her and she listened well. One hot summer day, she told me about Yulia, her childhood pet. I was very young and she only told the story once. So picture this, a little girl sitting in a Polish farmhouse. She hears a slight noise and notices a fly circling around. Maybe she is bored or lonely, so she starts to pay very close attention to the way sunlight glitters off its body, to the way the mouth parts dab gently, to the way the front legs scrunch together as if anticipating a great feast. And the little girl opened her heart and called that, called that fly her friend. That little girl was my mom and the fly she named Yulia, or Julia in English. And I guess there is nothing unusual about a child wanting a pet. But for a grown woman surrounded by cares, to tell her boy about it 35 years later, that is rare. So how does the song go? All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. T'was God that made them all. Mom hated conflict. The violence in TV shows repulsed her. That was why she enjoyed reading so much. It was her practice when a fly came into the house to shoo it towards the back door and expel it. Sometimes this took some time because flies are not bright and don't know when they are being helped. And Rita and I have both picked up on this over the years when some crawling or fall flying thing wanders into our house, there is a good chance that it will be trapped as gently as possible and released outside to continue its short life as God intended. Kindness does not just appear, it is learned and a gift from God. Mom, above everything else, was content that full Polish farmhouse where she was born and raised had a dirt floor. It never ceased to amaze mom how far she had come and how much she had been given. Roosters are glorious to look at. Mom liked nice clothes and pretty things, but they could not hold her. She had everything she wanted, a husband, children, a church, a garden, house with a real floor. I never heard her complain about wanting stuff. There was no bitter regret in her life. As I reflected on her life, Psalm 23 came to mind. It is a Psalm of King David and it starts, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Here are some of the things my mother taught me. Keep your family and friends close to your heart. 
read. It will make your spirit grow. And good, enjoy good food. It is the cheapest way to travel. Grow things. It leads to peace of mind, and they are tasty. Look carefully at small things. They can be wondrous. Learn and practice kindness. Don't ask too much for yourself. You will be surprised at how much you are given. Be content. Thank you, and stay safe. Thank you, Harry, for giving us a glimpse. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Do you know, as I mentioned off the top, of course, these days are often, uh, well, not often, are always uh, difficult. And uh, from the perspective of a, of a pastor, it, uh, you know, sometimes it can be a little stressful because you're thinking about the family and you're wanting it to be very meaningful. Uh, for everyone involved, and there's the details. And so there's a lot swimming in, in my own mind. But what I always love is, again, hearing the stories and hearing not just the things that have happened in the past and the things that you admire about your loved one, but, but uh, hearing that, that bond and that connection that uh, is represented by those stories and, and just hearing how meaningful that is. So thank you for giving us that glimpse. That was really quite beautiful. I asked Rita if there was a, a particular scripture that uh, was a favorite or something that you would appreciate uh, uh, me thinking about for this morning. And, uh, and Psalm 23 was mentioned. Walter read that for us earlier. And Harry, you just referenced it as well. And so I was, I was thinking upon the psalm again, and uh, especially in relationship to your mother. And uh, I sent out a few notes, and I asked people. Uh, the reality was, of, of course, and uh, I did not know your mom very well. And so um, I asked others to share some stories as well, and to give me a glimpse of, of this woman, and in, particularly in the life of of our church. And, and a few themes emerged repeatedly, uh, all of which you expressed already. But uh, what I heard, again, was of, of a faithful, uh, wonderful lady who uh, demonstrated always a kindness and a gentleness. And again, I used the word already, but it, it kept recurring was, again, just a faithfulness, a faithfulness to her church and to the areas of service that you mentioned, and just that uh, constancy and gentleness. And people spoke of the smile out back, and, and uh, I think it was Linda shared about how much her mother just loved hearing your mother's stories of those travels, and uh, these must have been quite the trips that uh, you went on, my goodness. And so I love hearing these things. And, and as I say, there was that theme that emerged of, of a faithfulness in service and a kindness in heart in, in Elsie. And, and that strikes me as, as interesting and very much connected to Psalm 23 in a, in a way that I'll briefly uh, uh, show here in just a moment. I, I think of the psalm, and we notice that uh, as, as Walter read through it, and I'm sure you've all heard it many, many times. What I love about the 23rd Psalm is how it, it's so brief, and yet it really runs the gamut of, of life emotions, doesn't it? 
from at the beginning, how it speaks of this beautiful and serene, restorative nature setting there by the greens and the streams, the shepherd leading and providing. It's, it's a beautiful scene. And then a moment later in the psalm, reference to one of the most vivid and infamous expressions in Scripture, this walking through the valley of the shadow of death, just striking language and imagery. And so you have in the psalm, like I say, this bounty and beauty on the one hand, and, and then on the other, this shadow and a darkness and uh, the reality is we walk through seasons of both kinds, don't we? And, and usually it's, it's not one extreme or the other, but most of life is navigating somewhere in between. And, uh, and so this little psalm, and again, it's interesting how it reflects these two sides of life. Even at the very end of the psalm, you see this dynamic. At least this is how I was reading it this week as I thought about it when, when it says, you, O God, prepare a table before me. So again, there's this picture of the Lord providing and I imagine a banqueting table that the Lord has provided. And this seems very good, but then it's still in the same sentence, you prepare this table in the presence of my enemies. So here again is this beauty and banquet, but not far off, still in the very presence of that beauty is, is enemies. But then after that, again, the anointing of God with oil and the cup runneth over. It's again, the symbol of bounty. So again, you've got this, this imagery at play of, of both, in a sense, light and darkness in our lives. And, uh, and this is what faith is. Faithfulness is, is that remaining constant despite the wild changes of life. And so when I hear of someone whose legacy is, is firstly remembered as one of faithfulness, of someone always ready to serve and always joyful to serve, uh, again, knowing as we do that all of us go through those highs and lows and, um, of course, uh, your parents have as well. And so despite those trials, to, to, to remain known to the, at the end of life as one who stood faithful and demonstrated joy and kindness, this is a, a beautiful thing, a wonderful thing. And this is, I think, what the psalm calls us to is, is a faithfulness and to look to the one who provides and gives us the strength for such a faith. Again, today we remember Elsie and we celebrate her life and we thank God for the gift that she was to her family, to her church, to her friends, to all who knew her, I'm sure. But today I hope also encourages us to, to look to her as an example and as an inspiration for our own lives. The psalm begins with a, a, a call and an affirmation and to a commitment of faith, saying, the Lord is my shepherd. That's a statement of faith right at the top. We've, we've heard it and read it so many times, maybe we don't think about it, but, but that is a declaration. The Lord is my shepherd, my guide, my leader, the one whom I will look to uh, in the low times, in the high times, the one who I will remain rooted in and faithful to. And so what a joy, again, uh, today to be able to remember and celebrate uh, your mom's life and say there, there was a picture of beautiful faithfulness, one who looked to the shepherd. I pray that uh, in my own life and uh, that in the life of our church that uh, this, this would be the kind of quality that we aspire to and are indeed growing in, this, this faithfulness to the shepherd. So uh, thank you for allowing us to share uh, in this day and in this memory of uh, your mom's life. And, uh, and 
And we pray for you in these days that that faithfulness and love and kindness and joy and all those things we mentioned would continue to be an encouragement to you in the days ahead. Let's close with a word of prayer. Our loving God, we thank you that you are our shepherd. Although most of us probably don't have uh, too many sheep uh, around in the yard and uh, maybe we've never even met a shepherd, uh, I think we get the gist of, uh, of, of what is being said here in the psalm and throughout scripture that, that uh, you are the one that we can look to for guidance, for truth, for hope. You are the one that, uh, whether it be a stormy season of life or a bountiful and beautiful season of abundance, we, we can look to you for the wisdom and the strength to guide us through. And I thank you for saints such as Elsie that, that have uh, lived such a life, a life of faithfulness uh, to you and to your people. And so we praise you, Lord, and thank you once more for Elsie's life. I pray again for her family and friends. I pray for Mr. Bloch and for Rita and for Harry uh, that you would bless them, that in these days they would know your shepherding, kind hand of love upon them. That as the psalm says, I and I am not in want, that they too would, would feel grief on the one hand, but also your com comforting presence on the other. So bless them, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning here, a few of you and online. Uh, may God bless you and go in peace.